folks, this is Quinn, that's Nazi iPhone Guy, and this is Mac Madness Monday on Saturday. Yes, that's right. We're getting ready for the upcoming Macintosh OS 10.7 Lion upgrade. It's going to be a lot of fun. I've been using Lion for a couple weeks, and it brings the elegance of iOS into the Macintosh computing system. It's really stable. It's just a really great OS, and I'm really excited for what's to come. Now, Theoretically and on the surface, this upgrade is going to be extremely easy. Whenever it's released and there is no set date yet, some people are speculating this Thursday, some people are speculating a week from that, but it's going to be here pretty soon, most likely by the end of July. Now, what's going to happen when you upgrade? And the answer is not a whole lot. You're going to go into the Macintosh App Store, you log into your account, you pay $29.99, you download Lion onto your operating system and it installs without a reboot necessary. It's super fast and super easy. But Apple has, in my opinion, simplified it too much and there are some precautions you should take and know about before upgrading your operating system and that's what we're going to talk about today. Now, a couple things are first. You are going to be wanting to run uh, Macintosh OS 10.6.8. That's the latest version of Snow Leopard. And if you're not running that version of Snow Leopard, you'll notice that you don't have the Mac App Store, thusly not allowing you to downgrade, or excuse me, download the new Lion package. So you will need to be on the latest version of Snow Leopard. If you're on Leopard right now, go out and buy uh, a $30 Snow Leopard disc or download one illegally. <laughs> And you will be able to upgrade to, as of right now, the latest operating system. Because if you have Leopard, you will not be able to jump to Lion. I'm sure they will have a disc available in the future. But launch day, day one, it will only be download only. So, acquire a disc or make sure you're upgraded to 10.6.7. Excuse me, 10.6.8. And that will allow you to be ready to go for the 10.7 upgrade. Now... You're also going to need uh, eight gigabytes of hard drive space. This doesn't sound like a lot, but a lot of people may not be having that. And if you don't have that, stick around for a second because I'm going to give you a tip that will allow you to clean up a bunch of space from your disk and also defrag your hard drive so that you have the least amount of issues possible when you move to this new operating system. So those are your two requirements. You need 10.6.8 and you also need eight gigabytes of hard drive space. Now I'm going to recommend a few applications that you download and try out and make sure that uh, you've run them to really clean up your Mac and make it as new as possible before installing this new upgrade. I usually recommend that people reinstall the whole OS altogether, but obviously, and again, this is not possible with the OS 10.7 Lion upgrade unless you do some digging within the package contents, and that's a little bit more advanced. So. I'm going to recommend that you up, uh, download AppFresh. What this application does, and it's very cool, is once you download it, it will tell you all of your applications that are out of date. And it'll also give you the download links and give you the ability to upload them or upgrade them. This is important because if you're running old versions, most likely they will not be Lion compatible. So once you've run AppFresh, you've updated all your apps to the latest version, I'm going to recommend that you go to RoaringApps.com. This is a compatibility list and table which will provide you with all the information you need to know if your apps are up to date. So Alfred is a great application that I use all the time on my Mac. And as you can see, on version 0.9.1, which you'll be able to check with AppFresh if that's the current version you have, it'll tell you, okay, it works fine. Now, I would go through and do this with all of the apps that you use regularly. If there's an app that you haven't touched in three years, obviously it's not going to be important that it's Lion compatible. But the major apps you use, make sure you go ahead and check. You can also view a compatibility table. Now, this has thousands and thousands of apps that will give you, you know, the exact yes or no. There are some problems, so, you know, this will say, okay, there's some compatibility issues, and this is, it does not work at all. And you can click these apps and read more about it and see if there's an update in the works or if it's coming. It's a really helpful list, and I highly recommend you use Roaring Apps to find out if the applications you use often are Lion compatible or if a Lion compatibility is in the works. Once you've done that and you're all updated and you know that all the major apps you use are Lion compatible or will be very soon, you are going to want to download Omni Disk Sweeper. So not only will this uh, be able to clear up some hard drive space if you don't have it, but it'll also just you know give you a general 
house cleaning on your hard drive. It'll remove old files, old cache files that are bogging up your machine. You'll notice with uh, disk utility applications like this that it will really just speed up the way your Mac performs. And if anything, it's just good to speed things up. But you will notice that it'll remove a bunch of old stuff that you don't need and you can clear gigabytes upon gigabytes of worthless data that may mess up the Lion install. So use Omni Disk Sweeper, uh, it's freeware, I love it. There are other options like Daisy Disk and stuff like that, but this is a free one that works absolutely great. Last but certainly not least, this is the most important if you ask me. Sometimes updates don't always work. Most of the time they do, and Apple's pretty good at making sure that you know updates are compatible and updates will work for everyone. But in the past, it's happened that they released an update and it was a really big issue for some people. And I always re recommend that you you know, backup, but especially now, if you don't have a backup of your computer, you need to have one before you upgrade to Lion. It's an absolute necessity in my opinion, and you should be doing it about every week anyway. Now, I don't mean a time machine backup. I need you to do a bootable backup. Now, if you don't have an external hard drive for backup, they're so cheap. You should have one anyway. They're like absolutely vital. You can pick one up on Amazon for like 30 bucks that will suffice. They're dirt cheap and it really is necessary. Now, if you're using a time machine uh, backup and you're saying, well, Quinn, why can't I just use that? That is not bootable. So it will be able to restore files and fix some things if something goes wrong in the Lion installation. But if you have a kernel panic, if something happens where you have no idea and you know your computer doesn't either, your computer won't even boot, guess what? Time machine's not going to do you any good at all. And you're going to have to go to Disk Warrior or a Disk Repair kind of system to you know, figure out what went wrong. And even then, a lot of times those applications can't figure it out and you've lost your whole life. You know, thousands of pictures and videos and documents. And so you should back up all the time. There's the three backup rule. Have three different copies of the backup in two different locations. So I have a backup always on this hard drive right here. I do backups of my vital documents on CDs, believe it or not. And this is actually really scary, but I also do backups um, off-site. So if, for example, my house burned down, and obviously my computer wouldn't be my main focus, but again, we have thousands of photos from my whole childhood, and you don't want to lose those. So I like to back up externally to an off-site backup as well, and I use Carbonite. However, there are a ton of options. A lot of them are cheap. A lot of them are free. But at a bare minimum, you want an external hard drive with an exact clone of what's on your Mac right now. So if for whatever reason your Mac failed, you can retrieve and rescue all of your information. So what I recommend is super duper. It is uh, freeware for the most part. If you want the maximum features like scheduling and smart update, which I use all the time, uh, you're gonna want the 2795 version. Um, actually, I don't have it enabled right now because uh, Super Duper just upgraded to Lion compatibility a couple days ago, and I'm running it right now. Uh, so this is the great thing about Super Duper is it is Lion compatible right out of the shoot. Uh, that was one of the issues they had with Snow Leopard is it took them like three months after the Snow Leopard update uh, to really fix things. But it's here before Lion, so it's good to go. You're going to want to download this and then install it. And as you'll be able to see, it'll allow you to copy all of your files and do a bootable backup. So if I, my computer's off, let's say the internal hard drive totally crashed on my computer. I press the power button and what will happen is there's like an alert sign or a Macintosh with a frowny face. And otherwise you would be in big trouble and you'd have to pay hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars to scrape as much information as you could off of your crashed hard drive, your failed hard drive. But if you have a backup, when you press the power button, hold down option and you can boot off of your backup. Absolutely 100% you're back to where you were before things went wrong, which is great. So uh, Macintosh SSD, I currently have two hard drives inside my computer. The SSD is the one that houses my OS and most of my information. So I'm going to back this up to external files. Now let's say you already have this hard drive set up, but external files, I don't want to back up to external files because it's going to erase external files. And external files, I have you know, external files on there. I'm using this hard drive for two purposes. So what you can do if you're using a hard drive already for something else is you can partition it. If you open Disk Utility, uh, which is available for finding in the spotlight, just search that and you'll be able to find it, no problem. Uh, here it is. It's my one gigabyte Western Digital My Passport. And I have this external file section that um, is taking up the whole hard drive so far. 
Now what I can do is I can partition this. My internal hard drive on my Mac is, or you know, the one that's housed on my OS is 130 gigabytes. And I'm only using up a very, very small portion of this whole hard drive. So if I click that plus button, here we go. There's two different sections. Now I don't need the external backup to be 500 gigabytes because the internal hard drive on my computer is only 130. So I'm gonna go down here until I can see right here that it says 130 gigabytes. I'm gonna do about five gigabytes more just for safety, uh, just in case something was a little bit awry. We'll do 137.95, you know, gigabytes are dispensable nowadays. So there we go. I got that and I click apply. Uh, what you can do before, which I'm gonna do is name it. I'm gonna name this backup. I press apply and it's gonna say partition. Once we do this, and don't worry because all the files that were on this hard drive already are gonna be fine. They're just gonna be put into a smaller section. And you're splitting this hard drive into basically two hard drives, two partitions. It's gonna check the catalog file, it's gonna do all that tasty stuff and it should take a few minutes depending on the size of your hard drive and the corruption and all that good stuff. Um, and once you have this backup section ready to go, this backup section, it'll appear, even though you have one hard drive plugged into your computer, two hard disks will appear on your Mac and one you can use for backup while still allowing the external files disk to be there. So we're gonna go to backup and when it was set up, it's not set up right now because it's unmounted and it's currently uh, partitioning, but uh, when it's done partitioning, you'll be able to say copy my Macintosh SSD, which is the, you know, the hard drive inside my computer, the one that houses my OS, copy that to backup. Oh, there it is, it should mount in just a second. Um, and you're gonna to wanna to make sure, by the way, that this is Mac OS Extended Journal. Once it's done partitioning, I'm gonna say backup to the drive backup. I'll click backup, and then I say backup all files. Not user files, but all files, everything. Then you'll press copy now, and it'll say, be worried, you're going to erase this hard drive, and you'll say yes. And then it'll backup every single file on your hard drive making that bootable. So we can try it right now. There's this backup partition. I'm gonna say copy now. You're gonna to have to enter your administrative password and it's gonna say you're gonna erase backup. That doesn't matter because we don't have anything on it. And then you can re-erase your backups. You know, if you have an old backup and you're doing a new backup, just erase over the top of the old one because you don't need it anymore. And you'll say yes, copy. So now it's gonna prepare all of your files and it's going to make a complete 100% bootable drive out of this hard drive. So if for whatever reason the line update goes bad or it doesn't download right or it corrupts while it's installing and your computer's not just a lemon, you don't lose any information, you just boot from your backup, restore it onto your hard drive inside your computer, and then you try again. You're good to go. So I cannot emphasize backup enough. I know this just kind of turned into a backup video, but that is really what you have to do to prepare yourself for Lion if you want a 100% foul-proof system. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe, rate, comment, and as always, stay snazzy. See you later, folks.